Hello everybody and good after morning evening. Um, I am here to give you a Blender tutorial. Uh, I thought about uh, practicing it and trying to get it perfected before I show it to you, but uh, I think I just want to wing it because I remember I have already practiced this and failed attempts to record a similar video. What I want to do is show you how to create a character. Just a simple one, you know, maybe low poly and whatnot. Um, I went on Google Images and typed in a chibi character reference. I've been playing a game lately and I've been really enjoying their chibi characters in the game. Um, that's Attack on Titan if you're wondering. Uh, and then as I was scrolling through images I found this one on DeviantArt apparently uh, by, see, by Marty is not there. So props to him for making this, this is really cool. Uh, it is a Ezio from Assassin's Creed character. The person I know who definitely wants this tutorial will especially love that. So what I did is uh, I opened up the image and uh, saved it, uh, but if you don't want to go looking for it or if you're like me and you're a little skeptical about DeviantArt sometimes, uh, I will go ahead and let you take a screenshot of your screen right now to to get it if you would like and then you can open it up and paint and then crop what you need and so I'll give you a second to do that. Print screenshot is usually at the top right. It says PRT SC and then system or like SYSRQ. A little weird. But that will take a picture of your screen and put it in your clipboard so that you can paste it to places. Alright, let's move into Blender. Uh, let's see. I'm hoping that you have a, a general knowledge of Blender. And by general, I mean you've been in it for maybe five minutes. So if not, you have your G to grab, you have your middle mouse to move our, our, the screen around, uh, you have your S to scale, you have your R to rotate. If you are moving your screen around and it doesn't stay with this, oh yeah, hold down Shift to pan, by the way shift and middle mouse click I mean. Uh, if it doesn't rotate around the thing you have selected I would go into your user preferences people find this tab scary sometimes and under the interface I w there's a zoom to mouse position which would mean if I zoomed out and then zoomed in over here it would zoom in over there but personally I don't like that all that much. You have your rotate around selection and other things your add-ons. Uh, anyway, last I was in here I was changing my themes to give myself a darker background and change the colors of things, so that's why those are different colors. Alrighty, so yes, if you open one of these, or you're one of those people who accidentally open 12 of them and find it really difficult, what you, what you have to do is you have to click on one and understand that it's always in the top right click on it and then slowly drag it into the next one this little arrow will appear and when that arrow appears just let go and it merges into that one. So I grab this one, move it up move it this way of course I probably have to get rid of these ones first and put this one back over here and then this one back over here and that's how you do that. Now there are simple things, a uh, tab to go into edit mode you have your vertex select, edge select, face select, uh, right click to select things, and uh, control R for a loop cut, which will cut something like this. You can also use that and then scroll up on your wheel to add more or less. And then lastly, by selecting one thing and hitting E to extrude to just extrude, I don't really know how to talk about that further. Anyway, so I'm going to reload the start file. Uh, let's see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit 1 on my number pad. I'm actually also going to come over here and turn on my uh, screencast keys. So now down here you can see what button I'm pressing. Uh, that panel is in. And then this panel is T. If you don't want the animation stuff down here, or this stuff over here, you can hit shift space. But uh, that kind of bugs me. So I went into my numpad 1 view, and I'm going to press 5 on the numpad to go into the graphic view. 
This means that if I have two cubes, and let's say I move one, I'm at the top now, using, move one really far away from the perspective of this. A little bit like that. And if I go to one, and I send it up to you on that cube there, you see that this cube back here is smaller, I press five, and now they're the exact same size, even though that one's further away, which just helps you line things up. I'm going to delete that cube by pressing X with it selected. I'm going to add in. Now let's do this uh, the easy way. So I'm going to go ahead and drag in one of these over. I'm going to go down here to the bottom left of this section of the screen and press this button. And I'm going to go to my file browser. Scoot this over just a little bit more. And then I'm going to go into the place that I saved that picture. I believe I saved that in my Blender file under random. Uh, it should be Ezio right here. And then near the top, next to the create new directory, there's this one here with four squares on it. That will make uh, thumbnails that you can actually see. And I'm just going to click and drag it over into my 3D scene. And that will add a background image, and I will now just close this. Actually, sorry about this. I might need it again. We'll do that one more time. Number, randoms, thumbnails, and then over here in my 3D view, I'm going to hit 3. And uh, actually, give that a moment. Press N in your 3D view. I'm going to open up this background images area, and here is my image. It asks, it asks what axis I want to display it on. I'm going to say the front view. So now we can't see it in the right view, the numpad 3. And then I'm going to drag this in again. And then put that first one up, and here's a second one. And I will tell this one that I can see it in the right view. And that's what all we're going to need is the pattern. So then what we have to do is uh, space it up. I'm going to go back to the front view and we want to align this to where his feet down here line up with this x-axis right here. And then one half of him, or basically this line here will be this blue one right here. Go ahead and get that out of the way. So go back down to these images here. You can change the opacity of how well you can see it. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that at 0.5. And kind of, uh, let's see, change the size of it too, but I'll leave it the way it is. I'm going to move it along the x-axis just a little bit. Zoom in. Try and get him centered up right. No, I'm going the wrong way. There. My 3D cursor, this thing, if you left click, uh, this thing is uh, the 3D cursor. You can hit Shift S to put it in different places or you can quickly hit Shift C to put it back at the center. And so I'm going to move him over one notch at a time. Might reduce his opacity a little bit more actually. And that would look to be about the middle uh, which is uh, 1.5 to 1. Bring that opacity back up. And now to put his feet at the x-axis, I'm going to pull this over a little too much. Don't want to type in anything. I mean, you can after I give you that number. I'm going to put his feet right on that x-axis. That lines up absolutely perfectly. See, uh, Marty's not there. You did a very good job with this. Very good job. And all right, let's see. That's all in order. So 1.521 by 3.541 if you want to just type it in. Let me go back to my uh, numpad 3 view, or the stage left or your right side, which would be his left. And I'm going to do the same, I just tried to point up the screen with my hand, uh, with this image over here on the left. Oops. Uh, what did I just say that was? What did I just do? 
I messed it up. Oopsie. Brought that layer back and I accidentally moved the wrong picture. Let's see, I said uh, 1.531, I think. Yeah. My memory is good. It lines up with the thing in the top of his head, too. So I'm going to go back to my third view and actually minimize this one. And then this one here. Moving it over. Wow. Let's see. He's kind of leaning back. I think he looks a little bit skinny here. It makes sense. Uh, some other tutorials that I've been looking at, or one that has helped me a lot in the past, is a uh, Peter's Massive Blender tutorial. Um, it says massive. Uh, I mean, the whole thing is maybe like two hours, but he goes in uh, very good depth on how to make characters, and he has nice little animations inside of his videos. Nice little music in the background. The only downside to watching his video is he is no longer active on YouTube and will not respond to anything you say. And he is in a much, much older version of Blender, so the menu doesn't really line up. But yeah, following that sort of thing. And then if I look back at these characters too, um, they are... I didn't get a side view. That was dumb of me. Uh, they're a little bit more round, but I'll go ahead and try and keep up with this skinny nature. I think I'm going to use the head that Peter used in his tutorial instead of this one. I mean, it'll still look the same, just shaped a little bit different. So I was lining this up still. It should be about the same numbers as last time, except for the x-axis one. I think I will leave it here at 2.321 and 3.520. I'm going to minimize it so I can stop accidentally hitting it. I'm going to go back to my one view.